If you're an epic Minecraft gamer, you would know about the Minecraft handbooks, the sacred texts only sent by God to give the mortals the knowledge of Minecraft and how to play it very epically. And some say when the four handbooks are combined, they unleash the ultimate Minecraft power and you become the ultimate Minecraft gamer. But such power cannot be explained only through one video and you know, also, we're a Redstone channel anyway. So today, we are going to look at the Redstone handbook and give it a little bit of 2021 upgrades because that thing was made in 2013. Like, I'm pretty sure the latest update was 1.7, so yeah. And in that book, you don't even have 1.5 redstone. So, without further ado, let's see what the first few pages are. So we start the book, of course, with our beautiful table of contents, which has all the things that we're going to be looking at today. And yeah, that's about it. That's the table of contents. And next up, we have the introduction, which gives us the author and just tells us a bit of stuff. And just to note, a little thing down here in the bottom left, CMB Minecraft, I love you, mama, baby. What am I, what am I even saying? It says that most serious redstoners use the PC and Mac versions. Wowee, isn't that a relic of its time now, isn't it? Howdy, partners. The next few pages then go on to explain all the redstone components, which at the time was only dust, repeaters, torches, and pistons. And as you can see me walking by, there are a lot more things ever since that book came out. So how about we just briefly explain all of these redstone components behind me? Okay, I may have lied. Basically, I spent like a good two hours recording an explanation for all of these redstone components, and then the finally edited part of this section ended up being 10 minutes long, and yeah, that that was that was really, really boring. So instead, we're gonna skip right past this and get to the next part of the redstone handbook. So on the next page of the redstone handbook, it explains lighting systems, which um, I, I don't really know how to explain how to make better in 2021. Basically, all these lighting systems are is a lever connected to a redstone lamp. It is nothing really fancy, so I guess the best I could do was show three different ways to travel redstone signals from like any direction. So here we have a flat line, it's just literally a redstone line. Here we have a redstone ladder, as you can see uses glass being transparent, redstone dust goes up, powers this lamp, and finally we have a piston with slime blocks with a redstone block at the end. And you know, yeah, and you use these combined, you can make, I guess, some pretty interesting lighting systems, but like, I don't know, this isn't really too extravagant now, isn't it? The next page of the Redstone Handbook tells you how to make a basic piston door, and you know, I guess this would work if it was 2013, but guess what, we're in 2021, and you know what, I'm not, I'm not even gonna explain why piston doors are better, uh, I'm just gonna show you. Yeah, here's a here's a compilation of piston doors. Here's a door, there's a door. End of compilation. The next section gets into some redstone circuits. So over here we have some mana stables, then some T flip flops, and then some redstone clocks at the end. So let's start with the mana stables, or as like the book likes to call them, pulse shorteners. No one has ever called them that, but this is the example that it gives. It has a one tick repeater, a four tick repeater, and a sticky piston that pushes a block. Uh I guess this works, but like no one has ever used them. The one that people have used is this one over here. This is a simple one tick monostable that was used all the time before observers. It's very easy to copy. You can just do that. And then I don't know why, but I built like three zero tick monostables. So here is a zero tick monostable, two target blocks, two sticky pistons, redstone dust. Really easy to make. It's locational, so uh, I don't know why I'm showing it anyways. Here's another zero tick generator. Uses a repeater and a comparator, and I just flip the lever too fast. There we go. There's the zero tick right there, and oh, come on mouse, uh, don't do this on me. And here's our final zero tick generator, and this one's a falling edge, so that means we'll get a zero tick pulse when I unflick the lever, so there we go, like that, and the piston spits out very quickly. So now next up we have a dual edge monostable, which I use this one a lot, I actually have this in like a really old redstone build. Basically, it will give a short redstone pulse when you turn the lever on, and when you turn the lever off. And yeah, this is basically the observer before observers. I don't know how many people use these, but I use this a lot. And next up, we have the dropper hopper monostable. So if we flick this lever, as you can see, it'll turn off and on. Now this is just one version of it. And over here, we have the second version where it will turn on then off. This one is also very commonly used. It's just a dropper with a hopper pointing back into a dropper. And then you have an item and a comparator that will read it. Here is a interesting one that was actually made by Meizuma Games, well, this specific one 
was actually made by me, but the concept is his, he discovered it in a video. But basically, this is a way you can make a one-tick mana stable made with redstone torches, because normally, you cannot one-tick a redstone torch. But if you have two observers powering the redstone torch at the same time, then you can get some pretty weird stuff like this. And finally, the observer itself is a mana stable. This is probably the most used mana stable now, because, I mean, it's literally a monostable circuit in a block. It is probably the most useful redstone component right now. On the next page, we have T-Flip-Flops, which if you know nothing about redstone, basically all it does is it turns a button into a lever. It makes this button constantly activate that lamp on and off like a lever would. And as you can see, this is the one that it shows in the book, and it's very long and it sucks. Here is another design with two sticky pistons, a redstone block, two redstone dust, and two torches. Again, I've never seen this design actually being used practically, like no one has ever used this design in front of me. This next one, however, is the complete opposite. This is probably the most used T flip flop or like the second use because this works on Java, it works on Bedrock, and it's just a really easy to make T flip flop. We have a dropper facing this way, as you can see, little smiley face. We have a comparator, we have a hopper pointing into this bottom dropper, and this dropper is facing upwards like this. And if we just push this button, as you can see, it works really well. Lamp turns on, flick it again, lamp turns off. Very nice. And with the introduction of observers, T flip flops got even easier with this little two piston setup and one observer. So you just push this button, look at that, lamp turns on, push the button again, lamp turns off. It works by one ticking the sticky piston, which will make it spit out its block. And this is just like a design that I threw together in like five minutes, but like you could just basically attach two pistons to each other, one with an observer, and one with a power source block, and it's just really easy to make these kinds of T-flip-flop. And last but not least, we have this pretty obscure T-flip-flop, which actually uses a note block as an input, so you right-click this, it turns on the lamp, right-click it again, turns off the lamp, and this one is also spam-proof. It's pretty cool. This one was made by Mezuma Games, and it's pretty interesting. If you look under here, we have an observer, just so you can see that. I don't exactly know how it works, but you can also turn it off, so if you do this, then it'll also just give it a normal pulse. But if you turn this comparator on, then wow, it turns into a T flip flop. So this is kind of like a really cool two in one circuit. And this is the last redstone circuit that the handbook shows, and they are redstone clocks. If you don't know what a redstone clock is, basically, here's a demonstration. It just makes an infinite loop of redstone pulses. And these are the two redstone clocks that it showed in the handbook. This really big one with three redstone torches, never seen it before in my life actually being used. And then this one, which I see a lot actually being used, it's a simple repeater clock. As you can see, this one is very, very fast, and you can turn it off like that, but it's just a little bit finicky to actually get working how you want it. This is also an extremely old redstone clock, and I'm actually surprised that it didn't show it in the handbook. Basically, instead of having two repeaters and two redstone dusts, we actually have this torch over here, so then you can actually turn it on and off without breaking and replacing redstone dust. But if you still want a super fast clock, then you can use this comparator clock, which works by constantly subtracting from itself and then just like changing the signal really quickly. This thing is a very fast redstone clock. You can connect it to lots of different things. Or if you want an even faster redstone clock, then take this zero tick clock with two spazzing pistons going back and forth. This uses zero ticks to make the clock go very fast. And you know, if I just slap a piston here, you can really see how fast it is. Look at that. It's so fast. And now observers have come out and we can make these very easy observer clocks. All it is is just two observers pointing from opposite ends of each other so they detect each other activating which makes a redstone clock and the way I turn it off is just retracting the observer so there is no more loop and finally we have the two most versatile redstone clocks so you might be familiar with this this is the etho hopper timer so if I just like unflick that lever as you can see it is a slow redstone clock and you can change how slow it is by the number of items in this hopper a very smart redstone clock it is used in a lot of builds and it's just pretty cool but if you just want a normal redstone clock with hoppers then and you can just make two hoppers pointing into each other with a single item inside and that can do you just fine. And now we're finally done with all the boring redstone circuit stuff and if you see behind me this is where stuff gets interesting. This is probably the part that you've all been waiting for. How do we improve all the builds from the redstone handbook in 2021? So on the next page we get this really cool deluxe lighting system which is basically just a block swapper. So if I push this button the block switches to a piece of quartz and this would usually be in the seat like that and if I push the button again it switches back 
to a lighting block like a shroom light or glowstone or whatever you want to use. And to be honest, this still holds up if you just need a quick block swapper and you're running low on resources. This thing is really cheap, just three redstone torches, two repeaters, and three sticky pistons. But of course, if you're like me and you're in creative and you don't care about resources, then you can build this version over here, which is also a block swapper. And to be honest, this thing is still pretty cheap. Three observers is just three pieces of quartz, and finding quartz in the nether is like really easy. It's nothing to do at all. And look, if you just do this, as you can see, it's still flush. We have our light in the ceiling. Just imagine you're under there for a second. And if you do that, as you can see, it's all flush. And the good thing about this one is that it actually works on all sides. So you can make this sideways, you can even make this a floor swapper. Next up, the book tells us how to make a 2x2 Jeb door. And if we just flick this lever, as you can see, this is just a 2x2 flush piston door. It's flush with the wall, there's no indent at all, no visible redstone when it's closed, and when it's open, you can just walk through, and you can even walk through the back, and through the back, it doesn't even look that bad, it is just the back of pistons. This door is super old, like, this thing, like, is incredibly old design. I think the first time I saw this was in a really old Seth Blink video, but no one really knows who made it first, but yeah, it's very easy, just six pieces of redstone, some two tick repeaters, and this weird piston layout with pistons, and more pistons. Pistons push pistons. Wow, so complicated. And really, the only way to improve it is make it very slightly faster with replacing the two tick repeaters with observers. So as you can see, this thing is a little bit faster, and it, I'm pretty sure it's still spam proof, so if we just spam this, see what happens. Yeah, this thing is spam proof, so that is pretty cool. The next part is a very simple lava pit trap. So here we have a trap chest, we open it, and oh my god, we fall into the lava. Now, I'm sure a lot of you can already see the problem with this. Wow, this doesn't look suspicious at all. It's only a too wide hallway why would i fall for this and also nobody falls for trap chests anymore but i mean if you're if you're like new to minecraft i guess this could work on you but i don't think anyone's gonna be fooled by this anymore the redstone is very simple you just have a redstone torch under here connected to the trap chest attached to some redstone which powers these pistons you open the chest and the pistons will retract but oh boy what if you have something like this this is a lot more convincing than that sketchy two block wide hallway as you can see everything is behind this wall behind this chest and wait a minute that's a normal chest not a trap chest and if we open this and uh oh oh wait what we don't fall oh well that's because this trap is a little bit smarter than that it only works if you take stuff from the chest so we take some diamonds and we fall into some lava this thing is a lot more interesting than that simple lava pit trap and if we just look at the redstone it is very simple we just have this comparator bud setup which is a little bit complicated i won't explain that in this video but we just have a comparator our chest is behind this block by the way and then we have two pieces of redstone dust uh, three blocks over here sticky piston with an observer and a sticky piston with a block that pushes above this chest and then that comparator powers this observer under here which will retract this piston which has some signs under it there's sand on top of the signs the sand falls and yeah you get the idea but if you need something a little bit more explosive then you can go with this design you open the chest steal some things and you die instantly <laughs> thing on the topic of explosives our next thing is a tnt cannon and to be honest this tnt cannon is pretty cool it shoots two pieces of tnt out the front and it shoots them pretty far away now there is one modification you can make for this is you just change this direction of this repeater and boom now it's a rapid fire cannon so if i just let it run you'll see that it'll just start going over and over and over again and i i'm, I'm still kind of surprised on how far this thing shoots like I mean, it probably isn't that far, but this this thing this thing it still holds up in 2021, to be honest. Now, I am not exactly what you would say a TNT cannon builder, so I couldn't really make a better version of this. I could make a smaller one, but it would always shoot and just be less good. Like this is how far my attempt at a TNT cannon shot. So instead, I made this TNT fountain. So if we just let it run a little bit, just imagine you put this over someone's base, and yeah, now it's raining TNT on them. And this thing sometimes does blow itself up so let's see if it does that and 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 there there oh it has not blown itself up yet that is surprising now if you paid attention to that last clip the last second of the game froze the game did actually crash after that so how about we dial it back down to something a little less 
destructive. So here we have a supercharged arrow launcher. Now in the one in the handbook, there is lava in front of here that makes them flaming arrows, but unfortunately in the current versions of Minecraft that doesn't really work. You can't put lava in front of the dispenser, it actually has to be a block away. And you know what, I just didn't bother making this like 10 times longer and uglier. So here we go, push the button and look at this. Look how many arrows get shot at you. If you get a beautiful villager in front of this arrows, let's just test how destructive this is. Look at him go. He's, he's just vibing. Look at him. Is he actually just walking into the arrows? Let's see if he dies. Come on. There we go. Look at that. He dies. It's so amazing. But yeah, this thing is pretty big. I mean, it's technically 100% dense. Every single block of space does sort of get used, but we can make this a lot more compact, and this is what I came up with. So we push the button again, and you know, look at this. This is actually flush, whereas this one, the dispenser, is indented into the wall. So how about we slap our villager friend up here, see, and this time he's actually just walking straight into the arrows, and now he's dead. So the way this one works is we have two pistons, three observers, and this gets one ticked, makes an observer clock, starts spazzing the dispenser, and we just get a bunch of arrows. And look how beautiful it is. We can put a bunch of villagers in here if we want to. Look, they're gonna keep running into the, the arrows. Okay, this time they're a little bit smarter. And last but not least, we have the community creations at the end of the Redstone Handbook, created by all the master redstoners that existed at the time. I'm pretty sure none of them actually upload redstone anymore, so that's kind of a shame. But how about we take a look at these and improve them for 2021? First up, we have Cube Hamster's 14 floor elevator. So boom, here is the compacted version of the elevator. Look at it, look how small it is. It's just a pillar of slime and our elevator is right there. So how it works, we just select which floor. Now it may not be 14 floors, but it's really easy to hook up a 14 floor selector to the system, it's not that hard. So let's just do floor five and we just go in here, push the button and we go up, it's very loud. And here we go. Floor 5, we get pushed out, it's all nice and easy. And if you want to go down, you can obviously fall if you want to, that's the faster way. Or you can push this button, and you can just go down like this. And there we go, we hit the bottom, you know you could have just gone into the water instead. But how about we go all the way to the top floor, floor number 8. We hop in here, push the button. And we're getting near to the top, so let's just go all the way here. And then we actually get pushed out this time. And look at that, we're all the way on the top of the elevator. And you know, you could push the button to go down, but we already saw that went really slowly. So you can also just fall all the way to the bottom where we have a water source. And then boom, there we go. You just take no damage. And behind me, we have the last thing that we're going to show off in this video. This is JL2579's and Cube Hamster's Super Stopwatch, but improved for 2021. Now, I'm probably going to make a complete video on this thing later because, honestly, there's a lot of cool things about the stopwatch, but we'll just give a brief explanation. So, let's say we push this button. A button in Minecraft has exactly one second of delay. And as you can see, we get 1.00 seconds, and then we can also reset it up the top with the red button, but it can also detect lengths as short as 1 20th of a second. So if we just flick this lever and we just let it run a little bit and then we unflick it, let's see what our time is. And we will get, let's see, let's wait for this to buffer, 4.85 seconds. This thing is super accurate. It's actually impossible to make a more accurate stopwatch. And it can get pulses as short as two game ticks, which is one redstone tick of delay. Little setup like this, repeater, and then redstone torch. As you can see, we'll get 0.1 seconds inputted in this. And let's say, I don't know, we do four. Now we'll get 0.5 seconds in total. So there we go, 0.5 seconds. And this thing was made by me, Timmerman, my Yuen, and Purple Dragon Nuke. We all kind of chip in our knowledge to making this stopwatch the best that it can be. Here's a brief look at the redstone. It is pretty complicated, but like I said, I'm gonna make a complete video on this later on.